Welcome back. Hoping to inspire you to read your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. We are in Galatians 5 looking at the difference between Jesus died to forgive you, but he rose again to free you. In other words, Jesus did more than just forgive you of sinful behaviors and say, hey, that's okay. I'll totally love you. No condemnation to you. I love you anyway, and I will always love you no matter what you've done, and I hold nothing against you because you're forgiven everything. But when he rose from the dead, it was to give you the Holy Spirit to cause you to be what he would call born again, so you would not just be forgiven, but you could live free. So that's what we're looking at this week. Uh, how do we really live free, and what is freedom? Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Make a few comments. And I hope it challenges you to keep reading and to study a little deeper. Here we go, New Living Translation. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you're counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. I'll say it again. If you're trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you're trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you've been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. You were running the race so well. Who held you back from following the truth? It certainly isn't God, for he is the one who called you to freedom. This false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough. I'm trusting the Lord to keep you from believing false teachings. God will judge that person, whoever he is, who has been confusing you. Paul says this, I love the way it starts, Christ has truly set us free, make sure you stay free. That's kind of a weird statement, like make sure I stay free, yeah, because the battle is real. And you say, what battle? The battle of your old sinful behaviors coming back and telling you in a false lying way to lead you away from the truth. And what is the truth? You've been made free from every sinful behavior that would go against the wisdom of God. Not that Jesus forgave you so you could continue sinful behavior, but he forgave you so you could be born again and find freedom. And Paul said, hey, if you're not careful and you don't really fight for this, you're going to slip back into this false teaching that pulls you away from truth of being free. So that's what I want to talk to you and just challenge you a little bit. Like, make sure you stay free. So what are we needing to make sure we stay free with the work of Jesus? Number one. He died for you and totally 100% forgave you. And the book of Colossians says he holds not one fault against you because of the cross of Jesus. So he nailed everything that was against you to his cross and there's no condemnation. So the moment you feel like God doesn't like me, God is against me, God is mad at me, every one of those thoughts are false. They will lead you to think you can earn it. Like, I will bargain with God. I will make a bargain with him and tell him, I swear I'll never do this again if you'll just love me. You can't bargain with God for his love. He just loves you emphatically and extravagantly. And one of the false teachings that leads you away from truth is to think you're going to earn his love. You're going to earn his love by trying to be good enough. You're going to earn his love by trying to stop living wrong behavior. And he's suddenly going to love you more. Or... This condemnation that God's mad at you. God is not mad at you. Every single thing that was ever against you was put on Jesus Christ at the cross. God's not mad at you at all. I hear a lot of Christians many times say things like this. Well, maybe this thing bad is happening to me because God's trying to teach me something. God is not trying to put something bad on you to teach you anything. Everything bad that would come against you was put on Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ dealt with it. Anything God wanted to do, he did through Jesus Christ to Jesus Christ. Here's what I love to tell people. Anything Jesus Christ took off of you, God the Father won't use it to teach you or put it back on you. 
he would be a house divided against himself. In other words, if Jesus took sickness from you on his back by the stripes, God won't put sickness back on you. He would be a house divided against himself because Jesus took it away, but God decided to give it back to you. The Father's mad at you. Those are false teachings. God is not mad at you. God is not giving you some disease to teach you anything. He took every disease off of you. He doesn't want to put it back on you to teach you anything. And as a matter of fact, if problems and pain and suffering taught me anything and, and led me closer to God, don't you think the entire nation of America would be closer to God today if pain and suffering brought us closer to God? It doesn't. The thing that brings me closer to God is the Holy Spirit. The thing that brings me closer to God is the work of Jesus on the cross. He's the one that opened it up. So that's one of the ways you have to stay free. You have to quit beating yourself up going, I have to earn God's love. Or that feeling of, oh, I failed. God's probably mad at me. God's ticked off at me. And so therefore, I'm just going to stay isolated from God. Every bit of that's a lie. So Paul says, that's the freedom. You need to hold on to that freedom. God doesn't love you because you read your Bible every day. I hope you do. But that's not why he loves you. God doesn't love you because you go to church and you give your money to him or because you help the poor or because you feel giddy. That's not why God loves you. God loves you through Christ Jesus, and there's nothing you can do about it. So don't bind to the false teaching that you can earn it, and don't bind to the false teaching that, well, he's mad at you and trying to teach you. You've been made free from all of that condemnation. Number two, what do you have to really fight for to stay free? That your old sinful behavior won't come creeping back up. That is the rest of chapter five. Jesus freed me. In other words, his love, no condemnation, loves me regardless. But he said, Mark, I didn't just come to show you my love. I came to put my love in you, and my love frees you from the sinful behavior. In other words, Mark, if you really love me, stop living this way. That's 1 John chapter 1 and 2. You can read that. If I love the Lord, then I begin to live obedient to the Lord. And he said, Mark, you're not going to be able to do this on your own either. And we all know that as much as we love the Lord, the old sinful Mark creeps up. The old Mark, before I even knew Jesus, creeps up and says, hey, I'm back. Why don't you just keep living this way? Because God loves you. That's the second falsehood of being free in Jesus, is that yes, God loves you. And then therefore, I must continue to keep living this way because he loves me anyway. No, the sinful behavior is to be eradicated through the Holy Spirit. Forgiveness came through Jesus, and now by believing you're a new person, but eradicating the old sinful behavior of your life is through the Holy Spirit. And that's the beauty of the rest of Galatians 5. It says it's a warfare. It, you have to fight the battle between your old sinful behaviors and now this new life in Jesus Christ where you've been forgiven. And Paul's going to teach us how to live free. So when he says you've been made free, he means no condemnation. You can't earn it. You can't tap dance around it to get God to love you any more than he loves you right now. On your worst day, even before you loved him, he loved you first. He says you got to fight to stay free like that. But also don't be so free that your freedom gives you a right to, well, live any way you want to live. It's just not going to work. He says this new life that you have you now have to come to the Holy Spirit and you now have to take the power of the Holy Spirit and you have to begin to war against that old sinful behavior because that is true freedom. True freedom is you've been totally forgiven and you can live free from all the past addictions and behaviors. You don't have to once a sinner, always a sinner. You're a brand new person and that's what it means to live free but whole. Make sure you fight to remain free and don't let somebody come in Step on you and teach you something that's going to lead you away from the truth, he says. Hold on to that truth. No condemnation. You're totally forgiven, but you can also live free of the old past you and live a free born-again life from all sinful behavior. Hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.